Good evening, Agent Hurst. Your mission, should you choose to accept it, is to create a model of an Imperial twin ion engine attack fighter using only hand tools. I repeat, you may not use any of the power tools in your arsenal to complete this mission. I have sourced the following materials and tools from Amazon for this exercise. One, a bottle of superglue gel. Several 12 inch by 12 inch sheets of three millimeter birch plywood. A Japanese double-edged razor saw. A high-quality German stainless steel straight edge. An aerosol black paint, as well as a liquid form black stain. Two packs of wooden round dowels in 1 8 and 1 quarter inch, along with a single 1 inch dowel for the fuselage. A pack of 2 inch wooden circles. Knock it off. A three inch smooth wooden sphere and a box of utility knives. Be careful, they're sharp. I've also sourced top secret diagrams from the internet to guide you on your mission. Agent, the brass just wants to see if this can be done. So consider it a training exercise. Stick to the plan and get it done. Remember, no power tools or fancy gizmos of any kind. And good luck, Agent. You're gonna need it. This message will self-destruct in three seconds. Boom! <laughs> Wait, no, 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 press. Hand tools only. Who does this guy think he is? All right, I'm going to make this thing so simple, even a child can do it. First step, I got to cut out these templates. The cockpit is sized for our three inch wood ball to match exactly, and therefore they don't exactly fit onto a single page. But a little bit of tape, cut them out, Bob's your uncle. I already have one cut out and here it is. Save the trouble of having to watch me fumble around with the scissors. After you got your template cut out, the first step is to transfer the template onto the uh, 1 8 birch plywood. I like to use a straight edge here in conjunction with the template to help me keep my my lines razor sharp. Otherwise my pencil tends to wander on the paper template. Cutting these out is just an exercise in patience and scoring the same line over and over and over again. You don't want to put so much pressure on the blade that it, the blade walks up on top of the straight edge and cuts your hand. So you want to just be patient, be slow. This is going to take some time. But if you, if you do take your time, the cuts that the razor produces are actually really nice. There's very little tear out. It's just going to take you a while to cut all of the lines up. Just have patience. Taking our straight edge from corner to corner, we're going to locate the center of both of our side engines. After doing all that cutting, the tip of your knife can get dull, and that is what these score marks are for. You just adjust the blade down into the holder where a score mark is, grab the blade with a pair of pliers, and pop, you have a nice, fresh, sharp blade again. Since we don't have power tools, we're gonna to use the tip of our blade as a drill here, working it back and forth. We're gonna bore a very small hole right in the center And through the magic of editing, I have both of them made. Now it's time for some stain. I tried black paint, but I actually found that I, I like the finish of the ebony stain better. If you're doing this in your mom's kitchen, make sure you lay down some cardboard so you don't ruin her table. This is a water-based stain, so it cleans up with water. Now you can use sponge brushes. I will put links to sponge brushes, but I also I like these uh, chip brushes. So either one will work just fine. 
There is no method to this. Apply a nice, heavy, even coat to all sides and then let it dry. This project's probably gonna take you about three days of your spare time to, because you're gonna be spending a lot of time letting glue and paint and stain dry. It's the next day now with the stain dry. It's time to take some 220 grit sandpaper and knock down the grain of the wood that has been raised by the stain. After remarking my center lines with a pencil, I am taking a silver steel marking crayon. But you could use any sort of silver paint pen or silver crayon, but I, I found that I really like the mark that this, this uh, silver steel marking pencil or crayon gives me. Even though this is designed to mark steel for cutting, I actually found that the color works great for this. You want to come down along your straight edge and you want to work really hard to try to keep your spacing the same. Once you choose your spacing, you want to keep it the same. I'm going with about a quarter of an inch here. And you run the line down to your center scribe line and then you stop. And then you pick it up again at the next line and continue it on. So you'll run down and you'll stop and then you'll pick it up again and continue. Like that and then you rotate the piece and continue the pattern and you end up with this snowflake type pattern and don't worry if the lines don't intersect in the exact right place because those will be covered up by the support spars or support ribs Now we take our two inch discs and we drop down some super glue and we glue our two inch discs right over the center of the wing. And I'm going to double stack these. I want two here to give me the right spacing. So I'm, I'm going, you could do these off the wing, but I decided to sandwich them one on top of the other on the wing itself. And repeat the process for both sides. Both sides are symmetrical. Now it's time to build our spars, our support spars, I call them. And there is no real measuring here. You just run the spar to the center disc and then out to the edge and then mark the edge with your razor knife and then just pop cut it on the mat. If you're doing this on your mom's table, you better put down cardboard or purchase the cutting mat. That way you can cut on the surface and not mark your kitchen table or your desk in your room or your shop table if you're doing it on your shop. And I cut the other one to match like that. And then three drops of glue, two at the disc and one down at the end of the wing and pop everything in place. Repeat the process for all the corners, including the sides. So you'll have six of these support spars all the way around. If you roll the dowel back and forth, it'll cut through it really cleanly. I got smart toward the end and I used little weights instead of holding them down by hand. So if you go in your shop and you find uh, some metal washers or some metal bolts or anything with any weight that you can set on top of the spars to hold them down while they dry, that is really helpful. And then you can move on to other things while you're waiting for the individual spars to dry. Now it's time to mark our center. 
And this is just eyeballing again. Get it lined up as best you can. This is a, a, a section of our one inch dowel. And then just work around it with a pencil. And then you've got a center mark. If it's not right, erase it and start again. These spars go to the end of the wing and reach right up into the center, not quite touching the one inch dowel. They're, they're just, they're close. And don't worry too much about the edges here. You can trim those with your X-Acto knife later. You can, because this stuff cuts so easily, you can, you can trim up the edges. And now this is probably the toughest cut in the whole project, this quarter inch dowel. The razor blade will cut it, but you have to really work it back and forth. If it's too much pressure for you, you may have to wrap it with a masking tape and then use the Japanese pull saw, the razor saw to cut it. But I found that if you work it back and forth, you can cut this quarter inch dowel with the exacto knife. You're just drawing a line coming out from that corner of the wing and then rock back and forth while applying pressure to cut the dowel. And then I held this one upright to illustrate how I glue. I do a drop on each end and a drop in the middle. And this is super glue gel, so it holds its shape. Hold it for about 30 seconds. It should lock in place. So we got to figure out how we're going to get the wooden dowel to intersect the ball in a way that gives us a good secure connection. And I think we're going to have to cut some edges off. So I want to, I think I'm going to cut some flat spots. Now you can use any like measuring cup or anything round little paper cup. That's about two inches across. I found this two inch metal ball in my shop or half sphere, and I'm just marking a, a two inch circle on the, on the, wood ball but you could use a paper cup or like i said a measuring cup or anything that's about two inches across now you've got two edges on your japanese razor saw you've got this first edge here is for uh, cutting with the grain and then when you flip the saw over you'll see the other edge has a lot more teeth that is for cutting across the grain almost all the cuts we're going to do today are going to be across the grain so you're going to want to stick to this this edge here the cross cut edge this saw cuts on the pull so I'm pushing the saw in order to just lightly score a mark before I start pulling. Now you're going to want to leave the line on this cut. You want to watch for the line on the back side of the saw and not take the line. Leave the line. And it's just very slowly pulling the saw down. It'll, it'll want to jump out of the cut until you get a really good groove going. And I found that by dropping a, a roll of electrical tape, I could, I could really support the ball better for this cut. And when I start cutting, I gently roll the ball away from me and walk the blade down the line. I this is my first time using the Japanese pull saw, and I really, really like it. It's, it's a really nice saw. I'm definitely going to keep one in my shop now. If you make your cuts nice and nice and slow, let the saw do the work, you shouldn't have a whole lot of clean up here. I just wanted to, to knock down any high spots and get everything nice and flat for when we glue our two inch discs onto the flats. Now we need to measure for our cuts on the one inch dowel.
So now we're going to try to, to replicate this, this outer cowl that sort of tapers from the ball out to the wing. We're not going to replicate it exactly, but we're going to get as close as we can with the materials we've got. And you're going to end up with four of these little half, half spheres or quarter spheres, and we're going to smooth them out with the sandpaper, make sure the edges are nice and clean. And we will glue those on a little later. After all that wood cutting, we've got a dull blade here. I'm just going to snap the blade, get a fresh blade, because now we're going to cut out the template for our cockpit. And this is probably the most tedious part of the whole build, but patience here pays dividends. So you're going to work your way around the outer perimeter of the cockpit and just cut it out as best you can. If you want to use scissors, you can use scissors, but I prefer to use the razor blade. And now on the in interior here, you're going to have to definitely use the razor blade. You want to leave the white parts of the window and remove the black. You're, you're leaving the window frame and removing the black parts inside the window. And just slow and steady with a sharp blade, work your way around. There's no, there's no quick way to do this. And there you go, through the magic of editing, about 30 minutes of cutting. And now we're just going to take some masking tape, some high quality masking tape, and just gently tape this down. And we're going to start at the four corners, and it's going to buckle in some spots, but this is small enough paper, you should be able to smooth it out. And you don't want to pull it too tight, but you want to pull it tight so it sits flush. That tape in the middle there is where I tore it, so I taped over it, and I'll use a razor blade to trim off the tape. And, uh, and keep it true to, true to shape. And there you go, it's all masked off, ready to go. And now we're gonna use our black spray paint, very gently dust from a great distance. You don't wanna really get it good and wet, you wanna just dust over the surface until you get an even coating. And you wanna use as little, as little paint as possible on this. Now that it's dry after about 20 minutes just carefully remove your masking tape and you should reveal a nice clean image if the image isn't perfectly clean you know if there's some some fade some fading on the outside some overspray don't fret you can actually take your razor blade here and you can very carefully scrape uh, around the edges and get them nice and crisp it takes a minute but uh, it, it, it works really well. It's something I learned when I was making the Millennium Falcon. Just scraping around the edge, you can really clean up your, your uh, paint edges here. Now it's time to attach the, the one inch dowels to the side of the cockpit. I chose to use super glue here versus hot glue. I like super glue, it grabs pretty quick. You could use wood glue, that's a, that's a strong option. So I'll leave the glue choice up to you. I chose super glue, but you could choose uh, other options. Now we're finally gluing those uh, half circles that we cut out. Glue on front and back, both sides. Gives the illusion of that taper coming off the, the, the main cockpit. I like these to have sort of some support members holding out the outer wings. I think it adds a little, a little bit of complexity and a really nice touch. So let's add a support, some support members. I'm going to cut four of them all the same size. I put a nice taper on the ends to match the slant of the cockpit. And now this is where you can detail the cockpit as much or as little as you want. I added some guns and maybe a couple other bits and bobs, but I'm going to let you see how far you want to go with the details. Once everything is dry and hardened like overnight, you can take your 220 sandpaper and you can smooth and feather the edges of all your joints. Time to join the cockpit with the outer wings. Once again, a liberal amount of glue. Give yourself a chance to work this into place. And the reason why we drilled a hole in the outer 
ion engines is so that if you wanted to put screws through the wings or the engines into the one inch dowel, you could for rigidity. These are just very small Phillips head wood screws. I decided to, to do that. Now, once it's fully cured, I'm going to say at least a couple hours, then I will come back, put the screw through the wing into the, the dowel on both sides. Really sink that screw down. Recess, recess it as much as you can so that you can put some glue and put an outer cover on it. I wasn't sure how I was going to do the outer wings. I, had, I was giving myself options, so I left the outer spars incomplete because I wasn't exactly sure. So now let's cut four pieces of the same length that fit inside the tapers on the outer spars, the triangles, and we'll put a drop there all the way around. And then we will just, we will finish the outer spars like we finished the inner spars. And they'll end up right about there. They just pop into place, a little bit of pressure, and the glue will set. And we're done. I think this project turned out really nice. And I'm sure some of you out there are saying, you know, Jason, you are clearly not a woodworker. You need to stick to metalwork. <laughs> I would not argue that fact, but there's a method to my madness. There's a reason why I chose to make this particular shape out of this particular materials. And the reason is if you look at the construction of this TIE fighter, it is almost identical to the construction of my metal TIE fighters. In fact, the process that I used to make a steel sculpture is the same as this. I have the paper templates, I lay it all out, I start cutting things out, I weld things together. The difference between this and a metal TIE fighter is just the, the tools I use to cut it and the tools I use to stick it together. But not everybody has a metal shop full of expensive tools or a place where they could do something like that. So I decided to make this out of a material that's readily available, easy to cut and work so that someone in their home, on their kitchen table, in their room, on a, at a desk, could make this and pull this off. And that's exactly what we did. All the materials and all the tools that I use for this project are available through Amazon or through your local hardware store or craft store. But I have links below to everything you would need to make this. And it's a really fun way to make one of my favorite sculptures in the Star Wars universe at home. It'll probably take you, you know, three days to make this and the results are quite nice and it's it's really easy fun and you can say yeah i made that from scratch now the ball did come you know pre-made we didn't turn it on the lathe and it did take a while this is kind of tedious work but that's where having power tools speed things up when you when you buy a power tool you're paying for efficiency you're paying for speed so we're doing things by hand we're doing things the old way it takes time but but love the process the process is where it's at I also have links below to the templates that I used to make this particular model. They're just images off the internet that I've resized to, to make the cockpit match the three inch ball. You can download them and print them out one to one scale and then you'll have pretty much everything you need as far as layout 
to make this. If you made it through the whole video and watched the whole thing, it was a big one. I really appreciate that. I really, really do. I hope I've inspired some of you to, to give this a shot. It's, it's a lot of fun and all of the techniques that, that you learn in making this translate directly into how I do my metal sculptures. From something as simple as this up to the Millennium Falcon, they were all made in the same process. And I need to thank my patrons over at Patreon. Without your guys' support, this channel I couldn't make it happen. I really appreciate all your work. Justin, Sharon, thank you for becoming new patrons this month. It makes all the difference in the world. So I really appreciate it, guys. Well, that about wraps it up. If you have any questions for me about this, drop me a comment below. If you wanna see a metal TIE fighter, I've got links above on how I make one of these out of metal. I'm Jason, this is Works by Hearst. This is a wooden TIE fighter. Is that good enough? Yeah. Mission accomplished. I'll see all of you in the next video.